Hi all, and here we are with uh, Daniele Giardini, and in this this chat, we would like to discuss the the pixel perfect problem, uh, which is uh, something you will have to deal with if you were publishing uh, 2D games with a with a with a pixel art uh, kind of graphics and style. So, Daniele, are you there? Hello. Okay. So we 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 uh, we had to deal with this problem also with our people in love. Indeed. And we had to do some really strange stuff and and in Unity. So like we had to um, we had to well first of all we're using 2D toolkit. Yeah. Which is great because. It solved some several problems, also 2D toolkit camera. So then, could you tell us which kind of problem does the 2D toolkit and two and its its camera solve? Uh, first of all, it's not really a problem, but it's very useful to uh, that you can set the uh, one unit to one pixel uh, orthographic camera scale, but just telling him use a unit to pixel scale which is very useful because otherwise you have to make multiplications depending on the size of mm. your screen with an orthographic camera and update them each time your screen size changes. Mm. And that is pretty neat, so you can just uh, open your project, tell to the tool to prepare to work in Pixel Perfect and you're done. Mm. So this means that once, once you have Pixel Perfect, if, if if you're publishing two devices with different screen sizes, they will everything will remain pixel perfect. Exactly, because the orthographic size is automatically scaled to adapt itself, so that uh, it keeps uh, one unit to one pixel uh, dimension. If you set it so, you can also set one unit to a hundred pixels, and it will scale to keep that. But if you want to work to work with pixel perfect. Uh, it's better to work to one unit to one pixel because otherwise you encounter tons more problems. Even if this can produce issues with physics, but that's another problem. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, because for the physics calculation, the one pixel one unit is about one square meter or one. Uh, uh, it's about one square meter surface. No. Yeah, for for, for Unity, that's that's a, just a rule of thumb to judge the physics effects. Exactly, and uh, physics can kind of get crazy, uh, especially gravity. If you have uh, object sizes that are uh, not really as Unity intends them to be in a 3D game, but physics can be optimized in a way by changing it, but. Uh, there are still other issues that you will have to solve, but uh, I wouldn't tackle into that right now. <laughs> yeah, but actually, so you, often you don't actually need physics in in uh, in two D games. Not always. Not I mean, depending well, on the game. If you're lazy, you you need it, but <laughs> you just <laughs> better to do your physics for a two D game because you have much more control, in mm. my opinion. Mm. Well, for example, the the dot twin uh, tool that the free tool. That you develop for for having smooth movement that can help in not using uh, Unity's physics in 2D cases. No, actually, I don't think that uh, uh, Twin is a twin engine, an animation engine, a scripted animation engine, and uh, uh, the way that Pietro is saying this because he was using physics in a weird way, like to make yeah. uh, <laughs> instead of <laughs> there are. Uh, people bouncing. that are walking along the streets and bouncing around. <laughs> and instead of scripting the animation, he was using physics, but that's a weird uh, use of physics. <laughs> a cool use of physics, but weird. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that scripted animations can replace physics. You can replace that instead if you really need the physics mm. by using uh, mm. custom scripted raycasts. Uh, and uh, you decide uh, if, uh, I don't know, if you're on a platform, uh, you don't let the the rigid body decide for you if it's over the platform or beyond and if it should fall or not. But you just throw the acasts uh, in a kind of clever way mm. and then you choose what to do with your object. And eventually use also scripted animations. But, but that's a secondary use of it. 
Yeah. Okay. But but uh, the main what 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 worries me is is to say that you should do physics by yourself, which uh, using Unity as a quick prototyping tool uh, doesn't sound a very helpful advice. No, developing your own physics. It's no, a typical actually, I, geeky, nerdy path, but maybe it leads to a lot <laughs> of effort and disaster in the end. But actually, I worked on platformers where uh, uh, other people tried to implement uh, the physics system, and I have to say that it was hell. It was much easier to modify the code and implement some custom physics. Also, obviously, it all depends. If you're the game is made of balls that are falling and bouncing over each other, then go for the physics engine, absolutely. But otherwise you don't need a full-fledged physics engine, so you can kind of uh, scrap all the stuff you don't need and uh, just use uh, ray cuts, which are still in a way part of the physics engine, so it's not that you're building your own. Okay. And, well, just to be completely clear, why, why is Pixel Perfect relevant for those who's doing pixel graphics and not relevant or less relevant? Or is it relevant also for people not doing pixel graphics? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it can be relevant if, you, if we fall uh, again in the world of geekiness, but we'll tackle that problem later. <laughs> but usually it's not relevant at all unless you're working with uh, pixel art. And pixel art, I mean, uh, 2D art can be called I mean, I suppose we all know it's called pixel art when there is no anti-aliasing and we want to see every pixel perfectly. That's why also it's called pixel perfect. And it's important because uh, we actually need to see the pixels in its... Uh, each screen has a resolution and we want to see our pixel exactly where one of our screen pixels is. Otherwise it will be automatically anti aliasing and it will look blurry or jagged, and that's not the effect that pixel art wants to achieve. So pixel perfect is very important for that, because if you have a pixel that instead of being in, a, let's say we have a resolution of 600 uh, pixels of width, uh, we place uh, our pixel instead then at point uh, 125, at point uh, at 125.02, uh, mm -hmm. it gets anti-aliased and it's all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that, that's very clear. That's very clear now. We were also discussing, uh, like, the 3D equivalent, or whether there is a 3D equivalent problem for, like, uh, the now getting popular voxel uh, kind of, yeah. of technique. Yeah. What can we say about that? Well, personally, I would call Ghost Shark and Desk them. <laughs> <laughs> Since they're making a block store that is completely voxel. But, uh, yeah, that would uh, be interesting. <laughs> but usually voxel, I mean, there could be a similar problem if uh, a voxel engine was made of uh, really separate cubes. But a voxel engine is not made of separate cubes, so there is no risk of seeing uh, faces that touch each other. And uh, this means that uh, a voxel, like if we have, I don't know, a voxel statue, that's made of cubes. Uh, it's not uh, all cubes stacked together to represent the statue. It's a mesh that shows uh, the visible faces of those cubes. Uh, if one of those cubes is taken away, the mesh is, uh, let's say, automatically updated. Okay. And uh, uh, Voxel doesn't need to pixel perfect both for that, both because usually, usually actually, I think 100% of the time it's used with perspective and uh, not with orthographic cameras. And with perspe perspective, you definitely can't have pixel perfect in any way. Okay. So, even sta actually, even stacking two different cubes, one next to each other, that, that doesn't show gaps between them. It's not a problem in that case. We want anti-alias mm -hmm. with uh, uh, perspective cameras. So, so we, will may, we may have problem of sharpness, but they're dealt with entirely different techniques. So, in order, in, order, in order to be clear, what, what you said um, is the use of meshes in this stack of cubes is the fact that substantially the whole surface of the statue is computed. It's not just rendered as, a, as an image. Exactly. Okay. So, but uh, now, now that Unity 
2D supports native, natively sprites. Now, of course, you can use, as we are doing in People in Love, we're using this, the native sprites together with 2D toolkit. But mm. you will have this kind of problem even if, if, if you're not using 2D toolkit. You still, ha- and you want to have pixel art, and hence, as you told us, by definition, we, you want to have pixel perfect because it's a sort of synonymous. Uh, then you still be will be in troubles when when camera changes and uh, and uh, and so and also resolution changes. Yeah, but uh, you simply have to uh, change your orthographic size uh, in real time when your uh, res- when uh, your uh, camera size changes to uh, the to the adapt it and make it so that uh, one unit is one pixel as usual. So it's just a, a few additional lines of code. It's, it can be done without any problems. There are also, it's uh, uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I usually I use it to do that. But right now there are also various uh, uh, pixel perfect calculators for orthographic cameras online. Mm. So you can just look for one of them and find the right amount. Uh, if you have a fixed screen size, or just check what are the sizes, that you, what are the numbers that you should multiply it, uh, and uh, make a method out of it. Okay, okay, that's cool, that's cool. Okay, I think, uh, what do we want to add to this? That, uh, we had one problem actually with uh, people in love, where initially we didn't manage to have pixel perfect. Uh, because the camera was not placed to one unit per one pixel. Then Pietro finally put it to one unit to one pixel, and we were, oh, finally we'll get pixel perfect, but that didn't happen. Yeah. And, uh, and that's simply because we were using a grid system, and uh, Pietro was laying out everything on the grids. But since the grid was placed in each tile at its center, and I had made all tiles in, um, uh, with uh, an odd size, 31 per 31. Yes. Uh, which actually I did it on purpose because uh, all the tiles were used at least at 2 per size. So at 2 per size it will get 62 per 62 and have a perfect sensor. Yeah. But the grid was, pl- was based not on the top left corner of each tile but on the center of each tile. So obviously uh, each, each center of the tile was on a half pixel. <laughs> and thus we were getting anti alias in a case. So to solve this, <laughs> uh, Pietro simply had to put the camera instead of them to, uh, to even units, uh, to each, each, um, each coordinate of the camera, instead of being 2, 3, 4, has to be 2.5, 3.5, yes, 4.5. Yes, it's, it's always dot <laughs> 5 off. Actually, yeah. I, I, I was uh, guided in this by Daniel like a robot and not understanding at all what I was doing, but we, it worked in the end. It's, it's, in a, it's actually working fine. Now I understand why, actually. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and it was much easier than the remaking the grid by placing all the tiles uh, with the top left decor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But if, if you start from scratch, maybe that's, that's a good yeah. idea. Uh, yeah. Or you simply do pixel art that is directly even. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that, that was cool. Then. I think, think uh, one yeah. last thing I would like to justify why sometimes you might not want to do pixel art that is even. Because actually, doing pixel art that is odd, if you're using it only at two pair or more scales, allows you, for example, to have, let's say that you have a 31 per 31 square. That way you can have a perfect single pixel cross at the center, yeah. which you wouldn't be able to have if you make directly even pixel art. That's why I usually prefer to make the mod and scale them at two pairs. Mm. That way the atlas is kept small, uh, but I have a perfect center to each square. Mm. <laughs> so, so in our case, we lost this feature because we basically used the camera two times. I mean, we, you, one can zoom out and then gets it, but uh, there's no way to have this feature at all scales. No, because odd times two is always even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, interesting, interesting point. Huh? <laughs> okay, then I will thank you and um, thank you. We'll uh, we'll uh, we'll talk again soon, maybe. Yeah, sure. Like in two minutes, as soon as you hang. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye.